nice to see you again. So uh, I'll be today talking about the topic of using simulators to learn controllers for physical systems. It may sound a little bit academic at this point, but I hope to be able to outline it in more general terms as well. But before I go to the topic, uh, a few words uh, to, as a background. So I, at the moment, I'm at the Aalto University leading the Intelligent Robotics Research Group. And the group is working on various kinds of physical machines from uh, robot arms and manipulators to mobile robots. And we have worked with quite many of you, other companies presented also here in the past in various application domains. So while I, my uh, presentation will talk about uh, not too much about any particular applications, I hope to be able to give you um, a general introduction to some things that we have seen uh, in recent uh, couple of years as emerging topics uh, for learning how to control various kinds of physical systems in new ways, add their efficiency, increase their safety and, and provide uh, additional performance. So, First, as a context, uh, I will be talking primarily about the context of how to learn to control systems. And uh, in theoretical terms, that is often addressed as part of so-called reinforcement learning. So when we talk about learning to control, that means that we are trying to uh, learn to control systems which we don't know at least exactly how they work. So we don't have perfect physical models. Uh, we don't have... At least we don't have analytical models of exactly how those systems work. We may have some simulators, but we, we have imperfect models of those systems, which makes, it, let's say, the traditional control engineering way of, let's say, control design quite difficult. And reinforcement learning can be informally defined as learning controllers uh, from trial and error. And when I'm talking about controls, that doesn't mean only, let's say, control engineering controls, but learning any kind of decision making uh, from trial and error. Uh, it's a universal way to learn optimal controllers for various systems and works by exploration. So the idea is that if we have a model that we can test various control strategies, we can optimize control strategy by somehow trying out various strategies in an intelligent way and figuring out which one works best. You don't want to do this exploration in a random fashion uh, because of uh, various problems. With random exploration, first, it being extremely inefficient, and second of all, when, in the case of physical system, it, it, it being extremely dangerous. But nevertheless, we are uh, in the in the setting I'm talking about. We are having uh, we are considering a system where we can try around various things and see how the system reacts because we expect we don't know the system from before perfectly. So, okay, the video doesn't seem to work. Uh, let me see if I click on it. No, don't worry. Uh, so, uh, there have been recent uh, very nice demonstrations how we can actually learn to control systems uh, which we have had no ways to control before taking these artificial intelligence tools uh, um, uh, in, uh, in action. So, uh, but the problem with reinforcement learning as any learning system is that it's often extremely data inefficient. So we need huge amounts of data in order to, uh, to learn what is the best way to control the system. Uh, and this is, data is often costly, especially when we have physical systems. So, uh, where time is money, but also uh, wear and tear of the machines actually causes costs. So uh, the basic idea that we are following, as well as, as most others, is that, well, let's use a simulator instead of the real system. So the idea is that we can learn a controller in the simulation environment, optimize it to do perfect operation of a mining machine, a cargo crane, or whatever other uh, uh, system we are optimizing. 
and then take that into action in a physical world. The problem with this is that in reality, our simulators look more like this. So in, our, in reality, our simulators are hardly perfect descriptions of the complex real world. There are various things that cause the so-called reality gap. And if we optimize the system only using the simulation, we will optimize it certainly for the simulation environment, but often the system won't work well in the real world. And that's exactly what I'll be very, very quickly outlining. And primarily, I've been talking about the problem, but let me talk a little bit about the solution strategies. So we have the gap because of various things. First of all, we have sensing uncertainty. Our sensors are imperfect. In real world, that we can to some extent address by simulating that sensor uncertainty as well. So this limited precision effects and other noise effects, we can to some extent handle. We also have calibration mismatches. So the simulation is not necessarily perfectly calibrated with the real world. And finally, we have also unmodeled phenomena. I mean, our simulators are simplifications of the real world, whether it's weather effects like wind, for a cargo grain, or it's other effects that are really hard to simulate, like complex interactions with, uh, let's say, a drill bit and a rock wall. These are really hard to simulate well. So we have a couple of simple ways to um, try to address those. And there are basically two things I want to mention. The first approach is so-called uh, domain randomization approach to increase the robustness of the learned models or learned controllers. And this is a way uh, where we are able to, by uh, varying uh, uh, the potential uh, distractors in the environment, we are able to make systems invariant or robust towards those kind of disturbances. So for example, in the example here, we, are, we can actually train a system to be agnostic or invariant to appearance of things in order to, for example, learn to detect, in this case, uh, the mug in the environment, despite what is the particular appearance of the particular mug by giving it all kind of crazy mug-like things and, and training the system to actually ignore all things are not relevant. Similarly, we can also train things to be uh, uh, model robust against calibration errors. So we, by ba basically making the controller work across various different uh, calibration parameters. Another thing we can do is domain adaptation. Sometimes it's impossible to make the system truly work across the calibration errors. So we cannot find a single controller or a single control system that would work in the presence of those errors. So instead, we want the systems that are as efficient as possible to adapt with as little real-world data as possible. And in that case, we are talking about the problem called domain adaptation, where we've also done some uh, interesting advances recently on how we can minimize the amount of real-world data to basically adapt to in as few trials as, uh, as possible in the real world to add up a controller to a, uh, to a particular real world system. And that allows us, by modeling the, uh, or the thing that allows this is modeling the uncertainty of the, uh, of the entire system. And um, that means that we are able to basically predict the uh, uh, the cause and effect relationships in the system without knowing exactly uh, an analytical model of the system just by having a simulator of that system. And uh, that allows us to predict or iteratively optimize not only uh, the uh, system but also uh, be able to uh, predict how well that system operates when it's put in the real world. So we actually, when we put the system in real, we, we know its limited uh, uh, capabilities in the beginning. And we are able to iteratively optimize by keeping track how well we can predict the system to really operate if it's deployed at any particular stage. And we can also choose how to gather more real-world data 
in order to, in the best possible way, uh, adapt that system to either a particular real-world system, uh, I mean, a particular physical system, because we can, may have variants between a single crane and another crane because of manufacturing uh, differences. There may be differences between the crane being in Finland or in somewhere else in the world because, for example, weather conditions are very different. Or there may be other differences where this adaptation is absolutely essential because we cannot build a single system that would work out of the box for every piece of equipment everywhere across the world. Um, and then, basically, let me move to conclusions. So, uh, simulators are a great tool, and I mean the whole uh, development of digital twins is actually, I guess, closely connected. Although in the digital twins, we often want to also connect the simulators back to real-world data gathering, so that we have real-time ability to also understand the current state of the systems. But simulators don't uh, give, us, uh, give us only a way to look at the past and understand the current state, but they give us a possibility to predict the future. And that prediction allows us to optimize the behavior of the systems uh, or try to find optimal ways to operate the systems as well. The problem there is the reality gap. And of course, uh, the reality gap is something where we, if we just want to gather data from a particular real-world system. We may get uh, the current n uh, knowledge of the system, but if you want to optimize and understand how that system will work in the future, so how to make uh, confident predictions and build uh, a reliable controller based on those predictions, we have to address these uh, uncertainties. And basically, I presented two on a very, very high level to basic approaches how people are currently working on this uh, domain randomization, domain adaptation. I would be able to give a lecture on both, uh, even without slides, but because of the limited time today, I invite you to have a chat uh, with me, and I'll be very happy to chat with or on and other uh, topics related to controlling physical machines uh, with the help of AI. Thank you, and I think there may be...